works is that I mean that's just any pro any reason that thing exits non-true, you take the false path, and so you want to basically go through and be very careful about taking that. You, you want to only take the happy path. Yeah. Assert that things are happy and happy and happy. Yeah. Um, uh, so tips basically I. I rarely go further than SH set and awk, and if I find that I've used some set of any of those that don't exist in um, BusyBox, then I rework it to work in BusyBoxes. It's kind of the lowest common denominator thing, and I just since the environments that I've been work that I often work in are are basically a a minimalistic uh, in it. Or in a minimal, minimalistic system. So, what is like a busy box? Uh, busy box? Um, we could do a whole presentation on that. Yeah, it's it's neat. Look, I didn't know that. Um, it's a multi-call binary that is basically the if if you've used embedded Linux or touched an embedded Linux, busy box was there. It's it's a single binary. Um, that implements well, awk set, sh, um, wc, basically almost all standard Unix. Yeah, uh, that's the yeah, it's the so interesting thing is because this name matches uh, with the the other uh, things, right? So, yeah. I mean, this is a server uh, <coughs> powered by something. So, by what is this uh, busy box power? You will find it if you've got you have a if you've got a DDWRT router or a, an embedded Linux on anywhere. Actually, it, probably in your pocket if you've got Android. I'm guessing yeah. there's a busy box on there. Um, it is pretty much like here's all that I ran. Yeah. So busy boxes provides me with you. You can use all of those commands. In a, in a single binary, and the reason it's so important, I think it's that one's, yeah, that one's even static. Wow, I wouldn't have thought it was static, but okay. Well, if you're using it, it's, it's it makes a lot of sense to be static, but um, I thought that the one that came with the distro by default was not. It's it's just too big. And then, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Well, we used it with LTSP and just stripped out most of the stuff. Yeah. Because we were sucking the init RAM FS off the network. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, all the all of them all like prepackaged onto that. It does so all of that in that same in that one binary. All that functionality. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So the packaging technologies need some credit right. in this. It's case. all yeah. It's, it's all inside there. It's all just a. It's a multi-call. It looks at the. It looks at the dollar. You know the, the arg zero. The name that it's called with. It takes different behaviors based on. On all of it, but basically, it's a fully embedded Linux system. Uh, you can have nothing but BusyBox and come up with Linux and yeah. be quite reasonable. Yeah. Kernel and BusyBox. Yeah. It looks like B show. I mean, <laughs> the one that goes in the in the RAMFS is not statically linked because it would be wasteful to be statically linked because it has other things that pull to the C. So by default, that's just that would just be waste. But yeah. Um, yeah, because then you have the code in BusyBox and right. the libraries and other things. Um, let's see. So yeah, so those are the those are the tools I try to stick to. I mean, you see a lot of people use Cut and gosh, I, I had a lot of different things. Most of the time, I just I stick with those three things. They can do just about anything. Awk is a fully is a full another interpreted language in yeah. itself, and it's. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's a very nice, fully programmable language in itself, and it comes up fast too. Um, let's see, the cleanup. I I do this set of snippets. It's in that new script thing. I do that all the time. Um, almost all my programs that use a temporary file anywhere, I just make a temporary directory, and then trap exit is um, is any time the shell exits, it's going to run clean cleanup. And then you check for that and RMIS and then clean up your temporary directory. No. It's important. It's very important that you um, it's very important that you initialize tempd in that case because if you didn't initialize it, 
mm -hmm. and this and say this didn't happen until later and you call cleanup then you can and somebody else that's at their temp outside of that the variable will trash their directory for you. So that's an example of you need to initialize variables. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I yeah, so I use that that little simple snippet a, a lot of times and I use that and trap is another useful thing. Um, May I have your attention? The time is now 8.30 and the library will be closing in 30 minutes at 9 p.m. So Please be advised that the internet connections will shut down approximately 10 minutes before closing. Thank you. So you can trap on a, no, on a number of different things and one of them is um, essentially a, a control C from the user. And so it, a, well a well behaved program, you know, you expect a well behaved program to get control C to take the same output to clean up its temporary directories to do whatever. And you can you can do that with shell just like you can do it with Python or Perl or C It's it's important that that makes a much better program so you don't you know end up with a bunch of slew of temp fair files left around with your temporary data in it. it. Just generally it's part of programming and so why would you want to use bash instead of just classic shell? Um, Bash has real arrays. They're, that is the number one reason that I end up going to Bash instead of Shell. Um, there's, an, there's an example of using one. You can actually, like that my array, if you try to do that in POSIX Shell, iterating over those, you know, that something with spaces in it that is you know, a, a string with spaces in it as a single entry, or if that entry had, you know, non-friendly shell characters in it, um, things just get ugly. So the number one reason I go to Bash is as soon as I need to use an array for something. Um, it's also fairly clean, like it looks nice to declare that variable like that. And the syntax is nicer than a list with just the strings and then you echo it to get rid of its programmatically looks reasonable. Um, the way you add an item to an array is kind of weird. <laughs> what that says is my, you know, my array sub the current length of my array <laughs> equal this. The um, pound size the current length. Yeah, that's the length of the array. Okay. Oh, well, pound my array, uh, I mean, this it does get kind of ugly, but yeah. pound my array sub at and oh. is that yeah, means all of the elements zero. and it counts the it counts all of the so it's, so it's not a push yeah, yeah. It, yes that is push essentially yeah, okay. um you can also do it like it's even more uh, obvious what you're doing if you do let's see oops uh, because I declare it as associate right really. So that's an array X. Um, you can also do X. This is probably has more overhead to it. Oh, that just looks pretty. Copy of ABC. Yeah, and it essentially <laughs> reinitializes yeah. itself with the previous contents. Right. Um, if you were a Lisp programmer, you probably wouldn't like that. Um, let's see. And the other, another nice thing in shell is during bash is that you can actually do string replacement without using set. Yeah. Um, so that that's the syntax for string for string replacement. So be slash home ie smoser instead of home smoser. Um, just replace the e with ie, uh, I guess, and that does it globally because there's two slashes. Um, bash has in bash four, which is pretty much everywhere at this point, I think. Maybe rel doesn't have bash 4 at this point, I don't know. You can use hashes and associative arrays. Generally, I think, generally is when I get to need that, I go to Python. I would think it would, it probably does. Um, once I need, a, so as soon as I need associative arrays, I usually use shell and go to Python. Um, bash pipe status is nice. This is something you, Huh? You've got to push for yeah. Okay. yeah. So you don't have to go to another one. Yeah. 
Um, this is an example of uh, this is the common gotcha that people get. Um, let's see. Pipe fail is a nice feature of Bash that just basically says if anything. Uh, yeah. So in that count lines, you can see lines equal cap. This file does not exist. Pipe in WC myself. And then I check, and then I check the return code. Well, the return code in POSIX shell and in Bash by default is the return code of the last item in the pipeline. Yeah. So WC myself happily counted up and returned true, and then I take the happy path of there were there were blank lines in this. I'll show you the I'll run that and show you what it looks like. But um, so that's a common gotcha. It's set minus O pipe fail fixes it. So let's see. Why do you pipe in there? No good reason. Just to show that just to show that. Yeah, that particular set of things there's no good reason, but yeah. there's plenty of great reasons to pipe yeah. in So that and then bash pipe status. All of the directory list pipe in something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was Yeah. Um and then, Bash. Bash pipe status shows the, actually you can look at each one of them, it, it will show you. Oh, each element in the pipe? Yeah, so if I said, yeah, actually, so that should have done something. But yeah, you basically can see each element of the pipe. You get the return code of each el of the element of a pipe. Um, occasionally, I use dollar sign random and dollar sign seconds. Dollar sign seconds is useful for timing things, simple timing. That shell has been up for 8,162 seconds. I can do. It should be somewhere higher. Yeah. Basically, the magic variable seconds counts how many seconds the shell has been on. So it's it's useful for timing, just because it's built in automatic. Um, 